if I want a six pack, which I obviously don't have now, right? Is I can't, you know, there's no six pack shortcut, right? Like yeah. just like there's no investing shortcut. Yeah, you can learn things fast. You can learn how to get six packs fast, but you need to put in the work, which will take time. Hi, my name is Wei Ming and I'm a full-time investor. So recently some of my students have been asking me some investing questions regarding the stock market. Like, hey, is the stock market too high? Can I still buy Tesla right now? So today, right, I've got Daphne and Titus to join me in an investing discussion where we'll be answering some of the questions that you might have at the back of your mind. So Daphne, can you share a bit about your investing background? So I started investing a year ago, just before Circuit Breaker, and I just saw the importance of you know having not just a stable income, but also passive income. So how about you, Titus? Yeah, I've been investing for the past three and four years, and I actually started my journey with Raming uh, with a 5K portfolio, and over the years, actually, I grew to a mid six figures. And a lot of my friends have been asking me, like, how do I actually got started, and what are the different companies I'm looking at, and that's why I'm here with Raming, mm. just to check it on that. So Raymond, I have a burning question to ask. So right. usually I would just put my money in fixed deposit and just let the you know the interest compound. Right. But you know, I just want something that is more aggressive but not too like scary. With higher for, returns. Yeah, with higher returns. Most of us, like myself being a Singaporean, uh, I also started with fixed deposit and you know uh, Singapore bonds, right? Mm. But you know the returns is not really that fantastic. It's one, two percent, mm. you know. So after a while I started looking uh, elsewhere, la, like in the stock market, you know, some of the companies that can give me higher return. Mm. So I think for beginners, you know, um, you don't have to look for too high of a returns yet, but maybe you might want to start with something like expand your horizon to maybe a 10 to 15% returns. So start to look at some of the biggest companies out there in the world today. Like, you know, what are some of the products you see out there? So for example, you know, everyone knows Apple. So these are companies that, you know, are one of the biggest companies out there, and yet they are still growing at a good, you know, 10, 15, 20%. So that, I would say a 10 to 15% year on year return is not too bad for a start for beginners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I realized that actually there are a lot of good industries out right. there. And like, what are the different companies are you looking at? Because I know, um, there are quite good companies yeah. out there. La. So uh, for starters, right, uh, 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 I would say a shortcut way mm. how we can start is look at like what industry is growing. Mm. So I would say when it comes to shopping, everyone is more moving towards the e-commerce space. So in Southeast Asia, I would say it's still a very new or very baby market. Right, so sure. like Shopee recently, it has been like gaining market share, not just in Singapore, but in Southeast Asia also. And then some industries like EV, electric vehicles, right? Mm. Yeah, so once you identify the industry, you know like electric vehicles, uh, this automotive industry is on up, right? What is the number one company out there in the electric vehicles? Like, Tesla. Yeah, Tesla. yeah. So, 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 the, you, you, so from a top-down approach, right, you identify the major industry that is trending up. And then in that industry, you go from a bottom-up approach to identify the top one or two companies in that industry. So in this case, you will identify Tesla. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because like what just now you mentioned Tesla, because, but I heard like the past year, they actually grew right. like almost like a thousand percent. What's your actually take your take on it? And like, is it still going to grow more in the future? Yeah. So I actually share like last year uh, during COVID crash, um, like sharing to my students and to, to get in on Tesla la, because I see it as, a, as quite a big potential move. Mm. So you just look at it this way. Um, like, I would say on the, most of the cars right now on the road are non-electric vehicle yet. Mm -hmm. So you can think back to a time where, you know, uh, using before the smartphone era, where we were still using like Nokia. Yeah. And then when iPhone come along, right, sure. like some people were like pushing, like resistant against the change, but it will reach a certain tipping point where, you know, there's mass adoption using the phone and then it, mm -hmm. you know, like the smartphone is here to stay. Mm -hmm. So I would say electric vehicles or like Tesla is not at that stage yet. You know, not everyone is um, convinced. So that is where the opportunity is right now. But how do you know, like, if it's if a company is at its all-time high? Right. Yeah. So like, good companies, right? Actually, you expect them to be at all-time high. Um, when I first mm. started, I was also very afraid of companies being at all-time high because what if I buy the worst possible time mm. and then it drops, mm -hmm. right? But you know, hey, if it's a really good company and and you're buying, investing for the long term. You don't really care that much about the short-term fluctuations. Let's say for Tesla, it's going at a 50 or 100 percent year on year. Mm -hmm. Then you expect the stock price to be going roughly that range over the long-term period. So I focus more on the company fundamentals. Mm -hmm. If there's still a lot of room for upside potential, then the stock price will just just mirror accordingly in the years to come. Mm -hmm. So you're saying as long as the fundamentals doesn't change and it's still a good company, you're still investing. Yeah. So how do you look at the fundamentals of a company? So there's a few ways to go about doing this, right? So in the case of Tesla, uh, a good measurement or a good KPI would be to look at how many cars, electric vehicle cars, yes, delivered. And is it growing at a rate that I want? 
So for example, Tesla in last year, right, it delivered like half a million cars. So it's about 500,000. If I'm expecting Tesla to grow at a rate of like about uh, 80% or 100%, mm -hmm. we should deliver about 1 million or 800,000 cars this year. Mm -hmm. So quarter after quarter, I will be observing uh, whether they, can, they are on track for their KPI. Yeah, mm -hmm. And if it's fall short, right, then I will, you know, I will be, there might be cause for concern. I will investigate deeper and see if like, hey, you know, uh, do I need to reduce my allocation? Recently, I heard like Tesla has like invested in Bitcoin as mm. well. Like, actually, what's your take on that? Because I think this year has been quite crazy about it. I think people have started investing in it. Like, what's your take? I heard news out there like people are avoiding Tesla because it has invested in Bitcoin. Mm. So my take on Bitcoin is like, um, I would say it's a new form of asset classes. If the management, in this case Elon Musk and his team, feel that Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in general is going up, then it's in the interest of the company to do that. Sure. So for me personally, I also think like. Um, cryptocurrency as as a as an asset class on its own will be slowly gaining traction. So recently, we see like big players, right, institutional funds, and even countries and national reserve, national banks uh, in America and Singapore, uh, getting more into Bitcoin. Mm. So if the big players are getting in, then I think it's a matter of time where you know you reach a there will be certain tipping point where um, the adoption rate will just slowly keep mm. going up, lah. I would say. Uh, there's no harm if you're conservative, there's no harm you know, investing a small portion of your portfolio uh, into Bitcoin or cryptocurrency per se. But you know, they all say like, there may be a bubble in Bitcoin, like it's really like crazy levels now. Right. And what do you, what's your take on it? Like, is there going to be a crash? So right, right now, as of this timing, I think Bitcoin is about 60,000, right? USD 60,000, 63K. Yeah. Right, and if you think down the line, it could be worth more. Um, you know, you don't really care that much about the short-term fluctuation. Mm -hmm. For example, if I think three years later, it might be worth 100K or 200K, why can one Bitcoin be worth so much? Because if you understand Bitcoin at its core, right, the supply is kind of a cap. There's a fixed supply, right? If the supply is fixed and if the demand keeps going up, that means more people want to buy a coin, mm -hmm. what will happen? The price will go up. Mm, so I have another burning question. Like, when should I take profit? You know, they always say that it's like, at the end of the day, it's still paper money. Like, right. if mm -hmm. you don't take out your profits, so when I first started out, right, I also had kind of this same mentality. I was so afraid, like, hey, if I don't take my profits, right, what if, you know, the market crash or, or the mm -hmm. companies go bankrupt and then I lose everything, yeah. I wasted yeah. my... Yeah, sure. yeah, so I think that comes from a space of a lack of conviction. Mm -hmm. And also as I start to develop more experience, I realise that is more, you know, that doesn't really matter that much. Because mm -hmm. if I really uh, have confidence in the company, and I know for sure, you know, most of the companies that in my portfolio will just keep growing up, having the knowledge and the experience, right, will reduce the, uh, I would say, the fear because the fear, you must understand, is a psychological fear. If you're a full-time investor, it's always good to withdraw some, to reward yourself, to go on holidays or for some operating expenses, yeah. if you're a full-time investor. But let's say if you have a long runway ahead, right, over the next 5, 10, 15 years, you know, you're building out your retirement fund and you don't need the funds for the short term, right, there's no point taking it out because you take it out and then you put back in your bank account or the fixed deposit, then you're, then you're back to True. square one and, yeah. you know, then what, what, what's next? Mm -hmm. But like, maybe you can just keep it there for right. the time being okay. when the market kind of like, yeah. you know, is volatile or like falling, yeah. then you come back in. Yeah, so that goes into this timing the marketing. Yeah. Mm. Like every human being will think we are the best market timer in the world. Sure. Yeah, but actually we are the worst, right? Yeah. yeah and no one, mm -hmm. I mean, based on historical, based on statistics and facts, no one can time the market mm. well over the long period, not even Warren Buffett. Yeah. So I don't want to play that game because I know it's a, it's a losing game. Lah. But I know there's a game I can play that I can show in. That means investing in these companies and holding them through these volatilities, the ups and downs. Yeah. So basically, just don't time the market. At all. Yeah. So uh, a good way for beginners will be just dollar cost average. So mm -hmm. let's say in your case, you start with your 5K portfolio, yeah. right? But okay. this 5K portfolio, you know, if you just grow it without topping up capital, you don't expect it to grow into a million portfolio. Mm -hmm. It's not that fast or easy. Okay. Yeah. So as you get better, in s selecting these companies, mm -hmm. you know, you will start to top out some of your, you know, portion of your salary in. Yeah, so true. let's say every month you save 20% of your salary. Mm -hmm. So every time, every two months, you can buy, uh, choose a certain date to buy some shares, regardless of whether the market is high or low. Mm -hmm. So that is a good strategy for beginners to, you know, start with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would you, like, what do you think of ETFs or unit trusts? Like? Right, I think ETFs and unit trusts, ETFs uh, meaning like exchange traded funds, meaning they are like a basket of all the top companies, right? I think it's a good way to start. The ETF basket will have all the top 100 companies. It means your Amazon, Facebook, Google, PayPal, Tesla, it's all inside. Mm -hmm. And you have all of them. And the best thing with is you don't need like a big capital to invest in all these companies. You can start as small as like a few hundred dollars. I would say beginners who are, let's say right now they're in the zone of like investing in 
uh, fixed deposit, bonds, REITs, right? Anyone take the next step up to uh, more than 10% returns, that's something that they can explore. La. So is it safer like, or better like, to invest in local right. stocks or US stocks or China yeah. stocks? So I think that depends on personal preference and also you know, what are you really going for. So I think, uh, I think most investors, most myself and also investors that I know, we start locally. Uh, but after a while I realized you know, some of the better growth companies out there, the better prospect or the better potential companies are uh, outside of Singapore. Because Singapore is so small at the end of the day. We are not that big. There's not much room for growth. Like for example, like Xingqiong, you know, I love their management. It's a good company. But how many neighborhoods are there in Singapore you know, to really grow their business compared to you know, uh, like a global business or at least a regional business like Shopee? Uh, most of my portfolios are, about my portfolio is in the US or China companies. What happens in an instance like um, they do something illegal and then mm. like the company mismanage, right? And then like it, the stock drops all the way to zero. Like what's actually your thought? So generally, when, when it comes to these sort of companies, uh, there, there are red flags out there. Then we, we, have, we can learn to spot them. Yeah, but there's where diversification comes in. So if you have, let's say a small portfolio and you have like three or four companies in different industries, let's say four companies and 25% each, all right? And if the other companies go on to like a three to four X and that company just remain or lose half its value, mm-hmm. overall your portfolio will still be very profitable. You know, even like one of my companies go to bankrupt, but I have three or four other companies and they continue to grow like 20, 30%, I will still do well. Yeah. So the last question I'd like to ask is actually like, generally mentioned about portfolio yeah. uh, diversification. Like, so how many stocks or how many companies should you hold inside your portfolio? Um, it really depends also on the you know, your, your, your level and how big your portfolio is. Because if you have a, like say, a, if you are start really starting small, like a $500 or a few thousand dollars portfolio, a good way is um, you can start with ETFs. That means you take the selection out of it and you just have the whole basket of great companies. Or you can have just one or two companies, or at most three companies. But once your portfolio starts reaching like five, six digits, you can have a mix up of like six to eight companies. Yeah, and I think that would be a good range to have yeah. because anything more, you know, like there's no point having 30 companies in your portfolio. Like even Warren Buffett, with such a big portfolio, don't have that many companies. So why do you need? Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. I think we learned a lot. Yeah. Um, if I want to find out more, um, how right. can I? So you can join. Uh, there's a, I have a Telegram channel. Okay. Uh, it's free. And sometimes I like, like to share like, my, some of my investing thoughts. Uh, some, sometimes I will share what stocks I buy, some, mm. uh, what I think will happen in the stock market. So if anyone's interested, right, they can join. Uh, if you have any friends interested, you can ask them to join my Telegram channel where sometimes I will just share yeah. some of my very real and honest truth about unfiltered thoughts about the stock market. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye. 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 See you guys.